felt like there is just way too much JavaScript in your life? If so, this video is for you, friendo. JavaScript is a useful language, it's everywhere, and it's super simple to use. But it's safe to say that it comes with a lot of baggage. Gone are the simple days of creating a quick web server with just a few commands. Well, until now, that is. Let's have a look at Nitro. You can crack open a console and create a directory to work in. I'll call mine Nitro. I'll create a routes directory, then add a file named index.js. Finally, I'll run a single npx command, npx nitro pack dev, and I am up. It's not much of a page, granted, but it's the simplest website I think I have ever created. This is Nitro, a bleedingly simple web server built on Node that is all about supporting your front-end applications with the simplest server footprint possible, as long as you follow a few rules. The first rule you need to know is that it's all about file-based routing. The name of your file, as well as where you put it, dictates how it's served. If you put your file in the routes directory like we just did, it's served as HTML. If you put it in the API directory, it's served as JSON. There are global composable functions that you can use, and they're auto-imported for you when you need them. Here's the code for the site that I just created, and you'll notice the directory is blissfully empty, aside from a few dot files that are required for Nitro to run and for you to deploy your application. Also notice there is absolutely no node modules directory, which makes things delightfully compact and portable. If I was serving a front-end application with a bunch of JavaScript, Nitro would know that and perform code splitting for me as well, which I think is amazing. All right, I'll add a directory called API to my Nitro directory and add another handler, but this time I'll return an array as opposed to text. Now, if I navigate to localhost 3000 API quotes, you can see that I get a JSON dump that's pretty spiffy, don't you think? For instance, the routing rules are based on file naming conventions, as you see here. In fact, these conventions are so straightforward and simple, I don't think I'm even going to bother explaining how they work. If you need dynamic routes, and don't we all, you can use another file naming convention, this time with square braces around the parameter that you want. Here, I want to return a single quote with a passed-in ID, so I make a quote directory, with a file named ID surrounded by square braces. In my file, I can add some code to access the ID on the context, as you see here, and I get the quote that I want based on my URL. It's that simple. As if that weren't enough, Nitro comes with a built-in storage layer that lets you quickly work with data which can be stored in memory, file-based, Redis, or a relational database like Postgres. You can also specify storage schemes for development versus production. Now, this isn't meant to be an ORM, just storage of simple key value JSON data. So far, I've been using JavaScript, but I certainly don't have to. Nitro supports TypeScript directly. When it comes to deployment, you have a lot of choices and can use built-in presets for different hosting providers. The default is a simple node server that you can deploy wherever node is served. <laughs> Let's try that default, see what happens, shall we? All the files that I need were generated and popped into the .output directory, and that represents the application that I just created. Having a look in my .output directory, you can see how it's just sitting there ready to go. There are a lot of choices when it comes to deployment that I'm not going to go into, but head over to the Nitro.js site if you want to know more. Like all good projects in the JavaScript world, Nitro is actually a collection of smaller projects from the UnJS team, which stands for Unified JavaScript Tools. Specifically, Nitro wraps convention around H3 and unplugin, if you use their plugins, as well as unstorage and unimport, which handles the auto-importing of core modules. Now, you might recognize one of the core team members of UnJS, Sebastien Chopin, a person whom I respect a lot and have had the privilege of fighting with on Twitter. <laughs> He's extremely active in the JavaScript world and is the author of the Nuxt framework, the very one I use for my publishing site, bigmachine.io. He also has code running in the Mars helicopter, so as far as I'm concerned, he has won and will always win any differences he and I might have. Now, if you, like me, are a fan of Nuxt and are looking into Nuxt 3, you'll recognize the routing system for server-side stuff quickly. It's Nitro. In fact, Nitro is the entire server backend of Nuxt 3, and it's extremely fast. Shameless plug, I'm writing a book and making a video about my experience building my publishing site, bigmachine.io, with Nuxt. If you're interested to know more, Hey, subscribe to this here channel, as I'll be doing a lot more with this amazing framework. If you're interested in the book and videos that I'm going to make, drop on my blog at robconnery.com. I'll be posting updates there often, and even offering the book and videos at a discount. Now, if you want to support my efforts, consider signing up there. I'm offering a discount to my YouTube audience that you can click down below in the description. All right, short video this time around. I wanted it to be longer, but honestly, Nitro is just that simple. It's that easy to work with. 
the perfect thing for a small API or site. All right, that does it for me. I'll see you again soon.